Okay, we've got our truck, we've added reflection, we've got our snowman with the reflection, the snow with reflection, the sky is almost dry. Um, I'll just check out all my brushes, kind of dab them off, dry them. What should we do next? Well, let's see. I'm gonna give um, my truck a little bit of time to dry, so I'm gonna jump back to my snowman and I forgot my orange. So <laughs> I'll have to get orange back on my palette. What's orange on this guy? I could make it technically yellow and red. Oh, I'll just go ahead and try that. All right. I'll make sure you guys have orange. But, okay. Banana nose. <laughs> so, right? Yellow and red should make orange. I'll probably go back and get orange. But, um... Yeah, technically that's gonna be his nose. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do his scarf. You can do the scarf whatever color you want. I'll have the green provided. I think the green's nice because it's gonna pick up the green. The scarf is gonna pick up the green and the wreath and the tree. So it's very Christmassy. Not only is green a nice color, but if you wanna talk about color theory, um, green and red are complementary colors. They're opposite from each other on the color wheel. Um, red is primary, green is secondary. So we're gonna come in around uh, the snowman's neck and we're gonna go in, not straight across, but we're gonna come in curved because Frosty's neck is curved. It's okay. This is my daughter's baking center. So she does all her videos over here. So I was like, hey, I'm gonna use her video setup space. I've never really done videos before, but I have seen my daughter do a lot of them. She likes to teach people how to bake. So I'm in the kitchen. So she just came down and she was like, oh my goodness, I'm sorry. All right. That's pretty. I like that, that's very nice. And since, you know how I was working on black earlier with Frosty's hat and then I jumped to the tires? Well, here's a great opportunity to continue working with the same color. I know we're jumping from subject to subject, but when I work with a color, I kind of like to move on to the next subject. It's a simple enough piece where we can do that. So what we can do is um, we can take our green and I'm not really adding a lot of texture right now with the green. I'm just getting the green on the truck for the wreath. Yes, they can hear you. Can I help you? Do we have a lid for the, the little plastic lid? For what? Like the little silicone plastic lid leaf lily pad thing. Oh yeah, we do, we do. They're in dad's office though. So. I'll have to show you. Here, hold on just a second. Do you need the second? Okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do to texture this, we're working with a small brush is I can go in with black, with yellow or with green. And you're just gonna kind of create, because I've got the base layer of green, right? So we're just gonna kind of layer. And I'm just dabbing my brush to create little lines. You see how it's creating texture? I'll do it with some yellow. Um, you don't have to do so much yellow where you see the yellow, but you kind of blend it in. So painting again is all about layering. And the texture is this just gentle dabby. So see how the yellow is? It's bringing, um, anytime you have more than one color, it just helps it seem more realistic. If our truck was just red without the white to highlight, the metal where the sun reflects or moon reflects off of it, it just would look really flat. So I can go back in with my green and I can layer some more green on top of that yellow as well. So you just do it until you're happy with the Christmas wreath. Okay. Same is true with Frosty's necklace. Oh, necklace, scarf. Um, technically, we could have gone in there and we could have highlighted part of the scarf. 
and you'll see it in the photocopy image that I have for you, right? It just makes it look more realistic. It's just that one tiny little extra step that makes a big difference. All right, let's continue on with our green and do our Christmas tree. So we're gonna do basically V's. So it's kind of like a flock of birds that fly in a V. Um, however, you, it, it's best for you to think of it. Overlap your green on the blue. So you'll notice I'm not afraid to take my green and overlap the blue, right? Nice and realistic. Now you can just kind of paint it, right? But it flattens it. So if we do that V, it'll give you that nice Christmas tree texture. V, V, right? And for a Christmas tree, we'll, we'll layer other colors in there as well. What I see in the image, and you're free and flexible to add yellow or blues, whatever color or tree you, you love um, is totally fine. When I go back with um, the highlights and low lights for my Christmas tree, like I could add blue. Blue would look really pretty because blue and yellow make green. It'll just make my Christmas tree kind of a, a different shade of green. I could go back with some green and mix green in with that blue. So it'll make my green a little darker, a little bit bluer, bluish green. I'm gonna add some yellow if I want to. And I can always go back and add some white and black, but I'll let it dry a little bit before I add the white and the black. All right. Um, I think at this point, it's kind of fun to, I just feel like doing the star right now. So you, you can do the star now or you can do it later. Like I said, with other areas, I think it's really nice when you, um, right now the star is just yellow, but I want my star to have some white in it. And I can take my star and extend it with the white to make it look like it's a bigger star and like it's truly shining and it's alive. So I kind of like that. kind of gentle and soft. All right, I'm gonna let my Christmas tree dry and we're gonna move on to some black detailing. 